Hi students, welcome back to another lesson. Now in today's lesson we'll be looking at conversion. All right. Now we've already covered the prefixes we use in conversion as well as the mnemonic devices that we use to remember our prefixes. Do you remember kick him down mister or umpire? Don't commit murder. Or King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. There are many other mnemonic devices that we use to remember our prefixes. So the first letter in each of the words that I just in each of the words that I just mentioned would represent the letters that start the prefixes. So in King Henry died drinking chocolate milk. K is for King, represents Kilo. H for Henry, represents Hector. D, died for Decker, so on and so forth. All right? So, whenever we're performing conversion, students, we have to be able to identify our bigger units from our smaller units. Now, as you descend the stairs, the units become smaller. So the bigger units are at the top and the smaller ones are at the bottom. So, which one is bigger? Centi or Deca? Right, Deca. Which one is bigger? Milli or Desi? Desi, right. Now you're able to identify the bigger units from the smaller ones, then conversion will be fairly easy for you. So to perform conversion, you need to remember these two things. One, to convert to a smaller unit, we need to move our decimal point to the right. And to convert to a larger unit, we move our decimal point to the left. Now you must be wondering, what does Miss Hamilton mean by moving a decimal point to the left or right? And what decimal point is Miss Hamilton talking about? Well, what I mean is, we're talking about powers of 10. Now, when you multiply by a power of 10, or multiply by 10 each time, it means the same thing as moving the decimal point to the right. So let's just look at this diagram here. So each time we multiply by 10, we our arrows move to the right one place. You see, look on the head of the arrow. It's moving to the right. The direction shows to the right. So each time you multiply by a power of 10, it means the same thing as moving a decimal point to the right. So if you're going to multiply by 1 power of 10, you move the decimal point once. If you're multiplying by 2 powers of 10 or you're multiplying by 10 2 times, you would move the decimal point 2 times. So that's 1, 2. And it's the same thing if you're converting from a smaller unit to a larger one. We move the decimal point, but we just move it in a different direction. So let me repeat. If we're converting from a bigger unit to a smaller unit, we multiply, which is indicated by the blue arrows. And multiplying means the same thing as moving your decimal point to the right. If you're converting now from a smaller unit to a larger one, we'll divide. And when you're dividing by 10 by powers of 10, it means the same thing as moving your decimal point to the left. No, this is what I mean. That is what I mean by 
to convert to a smaller unit, move the decimal points to the right. And to convert to a larger unit, we move our decimal points to the left. Now let's do some examples just to see how this works. All right. All right. Question number one. It says convert 24 kilometers to meters. And we have some steps that we're going to follow just to ensure that we are doing the right thing. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to write down the value we are converting. And then after we write down that value, we're going to determine the number of jumps from one prefix to the next. And we're going to go into that. And then we're going to move the decimal point the same number of times by filling the empty egg trays with zeros. So let's go into work in this question. Step one, write down the value you are converting. What are we converting? 24 kilometers. So let us write that down. And what are we going to? We're going to write it with the decimal point. No. In the question, you did not see a decimal point. So how is it that a decimal point ended up wind up in this number? It's because in every whole number, there is a quote-unquote invisible point. It means, students, that in every whole number, there is a decimal point at the end of the last digit. It comes after the digit in the ones place. All right? So, that's where the decimal point will always go in a whole number. All right? So this is step one. Then we're going to determine the number of jumps from one prefix to the next. So we're moving from kilo to meters. So where would we find meter on the diagram? At the base unit. Remember, our different base units are meters, grams, and liters, right? That's what we're looking at for this lesson. Meters, gram, and liter. Meter measures what quantity? Length, good, and liter measures volume of a liquid and grams measures mass all right good so meter would come for base unit here so we're going to determine the number of jumps from one prefix to the next so we're moving from kilo to base units so we put that the kilo is our starting position and you see my little man here he's off to work so he's starting at kilo. I wonder how many jumps will there be from kilo to meter? Let's check it out and see. One, two, three. So the number of jumps from kilo. To base, which is meter, is 3. So that means that we're going to move the decimal point the same number of times. All right? So since we jumped from kilo to meter three times, it took three jumps, we're going to also move our decimal point or jump our decimal point three times. So this is our decimal point here and we're going to jump, move it three times. One, two, three. So that would mean the decimal point would move from the current position to right at the end. 
And then what does the rest of step three says? Fill the empty egg trays with zeros. So you see these um, arches, these red arches? Think of them as egg trays. And we're going to fill up the egg trays with some eggs. We don't want the trays to be empty now. So let's fill them up. One, two, three. All right. So then, 24 kilometers is going to be equal to 24,000 meters. This is missing the unit. 24,000 meters. All right. Let's try another example, students. In this example, we are moving from centigrams to deca. The capital D A, uh, the capital D common A stands for deca. If we use the common D, it would be deci, all right? Now, in the previous example, we moved from a bigger unit to a smaller one. We moved from kilo to meter. Now, we are going to do the opposite. We're going to be moving from a centi to deca. So, we're moving from a smaller unit to a larger unit. So when we convert to a larger unit, which direction do we move our arrows again? To the left, just as how the man is jumping up to the left. So let us do this conversion. We, the man is standing at his starting position, which is centi, right? And he has to jump up to deca, so he's moving to the left. How many times does he have to jump? To reach deca. One, two, three. Awesome. He jumped three times. So that means that we're going to move our arrow or decimal point how many times? Three. And what direction are we going to move the R decimal point? Are we moving it to the left or to the right? We're going to move it to the left because we're converting to a bigger unit. And when we convert to a bigger unit, we move our decimal point to the left. If I had said right earlier, please forgive me. All right. So since we're moving to a bigger unit, we're moving our decimal point to the left. And we're going to move it to the left three times. So let's go. That's one, two, three. So what's going to happen to the decimal point now, students? It's going to move from the current position to... Right, so it's going to move there. And then what happens? What should we do next? The remainder of step three says fill the empty egg trays with zeros. So how many empty egg trays do we have? One. This, this tray has something sitting in it already. And this tray has something sitting in it already. So the only tray that has nothing there is this one that I'm highlighting on your screen. So we're going to fill it with zero. Now, when you have a decimal point in front, like so, as you're seeing on your screen, it's good if you put an additional zero to hold this place, but it's not necessary. So we can have our answer as point zero one eight. Or if we take a look down here, 0 0.018. All right, they both are saying the same thing. It's just that the second format here 
has an extra zero at the front of the decimal point just to hold its space. All right? And this is how, students, we convert from bigger units to smaller ones and vice versa. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to like and comment down below if this video helps. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching students and take care.